I'm Jackie Doucette, and I'm on a mission to discover exactly what life is like beyond retirement. Join me while I chat with people who've already done it, who've retired to something rather than from something. Let's find out together exactly what's waiting for us when we say goodbye to that nine to five. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Retirement. Today, I'm really happy to be joined by Pam Kruger, who's a recognized investor advocate, personal finance journalist, and an author. She created and co-hosted the Investor Education TV series Money Track, which aired on PBS from 2005 to 2019. And at the request of her viewers, she created Wealth Ramp as a free tool to help people who are looking for an advisor they could trust. She's also the co-host of the Friends Talk Money podcast. Pam, thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here, Jackie. I'm excited. I'm really I'm really interested in all of the things that you uh, that you're doing these days, but let's start with a little bit about you, how you got started and where you ended up where you are today. Oh gosh, okay. It it is kind of a strange backstory, a lot of irony. Um started out in the um back then when I started, it was being it, basically the title was stockbroker. So I was hired at a major Wall Street firm and 24 years old and went in with, you know, the idea that this is going to be the best career for me ever. And it probably took me about two months to figure out that it was more of a sales role. And it was less advice and much more about opening new accounts and making sales. And I, I didn't want to do it. I felt that the business model didn't fit in a line with what people really were looking for, which was advice. So I did everything I could to get fired because I didn't want to be there. I thought I wouldn't go to law school. And I actually did everything I could to get fired and I didn't get fired. I got promoted. Oh no. <laughs> promoted. I was in management and now I'm watching over, imagine I'm 28 and I'm watching over 60 brokers. All of them are older than I am. All of them are male. And I got along with them just fine. But the practices that I saw when I saw some of my own brokers who were answering to me out and basically talking with cognitively impaired older people about annuities that they should be buying in their IRA accounts. And I said, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. And that's why I became somewhat of a voice uh, um, for educating people about the way the financial services industry works and brokers versus advisors. And so my my career took me in the direction of investor advocacy and education uh, because I could, I could have stayed that path and I would have been continuing to make a lot of money doing it. But I felt that some of the sales practices were not in keeping with anything I'd be able to sleep at night. Just it, I just right. didn't think the business model was right. So I, I went and did my own thing. I just went out and just did my own thing and then got in, eventually got into television. And um, on, my, on our show, Money Track, I was able to interview regularly John Bogle. Uh, Warren Buffett's been on our show. But we always use real stories of real people. And what they were doing. And many of those stories were about people who are about to retire or already had just recently retired. So retirement has been, you know, sort of my focus for years. Wow. That's, I can understand the the feeling of, of uh, I don't know, disconnect, I guess, between what you were doing and how you felt things should be running when you were doing the uh, the stockbroker type job. It's a, it'll be hard to to be a salesperson when what you wanted to do was help people invest or help people make make their future more secure and do it in a way that's unbiased so that they're, they're, they're yeah. no one's incentivized to recommend a particular type of investment or exactly. strategy because I'm going because they're going to get paid on the back end so the only reason that wealth ramp was born Jackie is because our viewers kept saying to me Pam you're always telling us I was negative Nancy about advisors you're always telling us how wary and skeptical we have to be about financial advisors, but you're never telling us where to go yeah. to find fiduciary fee-only advisors that you vetted. So that's why I curated my network of 240 advisors. And then that's how WealthRamp was born. So it's all been out of investor advocacy and trying to solve problems, especially for people worried about running out of money in retirement. Yeah. And that's a big fear these days as we live longer. Now, even even if we had planned for a good retirement and had everything 
you know, all the all the ducks in a row, so to speak, as we're living longer, the fear of running out of money is is real. And I think a lot of people worry about that. So some people are trying to find other ways to uh, augment their retirement a little bit. And I understand that you help people work on or create sort of unconventional retirement plans. Can you talk a little bit about what you do and, and the kind of plans that people have uh, developed with you? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So, you know, I don't think that anymore there really is such a thing as the traditional or conventional because longevity is the biggest risk to our retirement. There's the great irony there. We might just live too long, which is fantastic as long as you have the peace of mind that you are going to be okay and that you're not going to go to zero with your savings during your lifetime. <clears throat> so it's a really um, pervasive thought that stays in the back of your mind. And so money at that point in life is, is it's not about Roth conversions. It's not about, you know, the details of all the nuts and bolts. It's about peace of mind and being able to say, look, I know I can work part-time if I want to, but I could still volunteer. I can do this. I can do that and have that freedom. So what I'm seeing that's really interesting, and we've all uh, been reading about stories of people who unretire and unretirement is a big theme which really kind of speaks to two thirds of people who are recently retired, you know, have said, I read this in, uh, in a study or a survey in Fortune magazine, that two thirds of recently retired people say they're considering going right back to work where they came from, even though it, it might've been a grind, but there's another way, there's another route. And one example of a very non-traditional retirement that has a lot of joy and you know, also has the financial peace of mind aspect to it is actually a friend of mine I've known for years who is about 15 years older than I am. And she was a manager uh, of, a, of a luxury furniture store when she was in her 60s. And before that, by the way, she really didn't have a full-time job because she raised four children in an affluent household, but that all fell apart when Sandy ended up getting separated and their finances were not what she thought that they were. So at age mid sixties, she found out she had to go get her first job. And this was necessary for her in order to, you know, just keep up a basic lifestyle. So she wound up being the, probably the top salesperson and in that furniture company, and she was just busy constantly all the time. Furniture store closed a few years back, just closed. It closed all of the stores. She had no place to go. So she took her skills and she tried to get employed, reemployed, because now she was at the point where she was thinking about, I should be at retirement age. And she was a little bit panicked about keeping up her income. So she want, she did end up landing another position at another furniture store and it didn't work out. And then she was really stuck. And for about a year and a half, Sandy was now, gosh, at that point, she was approaching 70. And now she was really concerned about her retirement and what am I going to do and trying to figure out how to, how to make it all work. And what would she do with her time if she didn't work? And she was a little bit panicked. And thankfully, you know how when we get older, our friends become so much more important in our lives. And her friends, including me, really persuaded her to try to start her own business. And so now she was starting her own business for the very first time at age 70. Wow. And she want she didn't really want to retire anyway. She never really wanted that traditional I'm going to not work a day at all. But long story short, Sandy launched a successful design business without having any design credentials or just because she had so many people in her network who knew her from the furniture store that she got the confidence to say, "Okay, take on a client here." take on a client there, see what happens. Well, now Sandy is 78. 
She's making more money than she's ever made in her life. She can now pick and choose which clients she wants to work for. She has so many referrals. She said she's busier now than she's ever been in her entire life. She wants to slow down, but her social <laughs> life, here's the benefit of what she ended up doing because she loves what she's doing and she turned her, her passion into an income and into a network. She can't stay home one night a week without, you know, there's, there's invitations that come from, oh, go to this party, you know, go to this event, this fundraiser. She's constantly asking me, do you want to go? I've got tickets. I have to give them away all my, you know, because her clients love her so much that her vibrant life is now much more than just the peace of mind financial security that she has now. She could stop working financially right now and just stop everything completely, take vacations and just relax. She chooses to pick and choose a client here, a client there. She is slowing down a little bit in terms of the pace that she's been going, but she's still by anybody's anybody's uh, measurement, she's still super active. This has kept Sandy young. This has kept Sandy plugged in to what's going on in the world with her friends, with her family. And it's taken away that feeling that I could go to zero in my retirement. She has peace of mind. But but the joy that she gets out of being able to help people in a way where she has great taste. She's a great designer. And she's just turned it into this to this big business that she never expected. And I think that part of the key to her success, Jackie, is that she, she, when she started out, she didn't try to make it a big business. She said, look, I'm 70. I'm going to just have one or two clients. She just imagined that she'd have one or two clients. And with social, social security coming in, that would keep her in the mix, keep her social. She said she's having the best time of her life and that she would never want to retire ever. She, she'll slow down, but she never wants to fully retire ever. Wow. That's amazing. That's a, And I think, I think you said the key there was just kind of not planning it to be a big thing, just kind of going along and, and easing into it because you're not expecting anything. You're not trying too hard. Nobody feels that kind of pressure when you're talking to them. And she can just do whatever she wants, which is great. I just find that so many people discount their own experience. And, and at the point where you're about to think about, you know, shutting off the faucet of your income and leaving your position that you've been in, the role that you've been in, no matter what it is, uh, in a big company, a small business, owning your own business, whatever it is. And I think that there's that moment where you realize that, wow. I have a lot of value from my experience. How can I turn that into something that I can offer and also make a little income from it if I chose to? And without the pressure of feeling like you have to do anything, but that you want to do it, I think that that's when it, you realize and it bubbles up in, inside of us that life experience and just the experiences that we've had from all the years of doing whatever it is we've been doing that we've become so good at, you know, it, it has value and you can recycle it into different things. And that's, that's something that I wanted to ask about. So I agree um, when you've been doing a job for 40 years, even if you've done three or four jobs over that 40 years, you've gained a lot of experience, a lot of expertise in certain things. But a lot of people don't feel like they know anything. They they know their job and they're good at their job, but they're they discount that and they think, well, you know, I, I couldn't have my own business. I couldn't do that. What am I going to do? How do you help people see that they're, you know, that their experience, even if it's, uh, I don't know, putting the water bottles on the jugs in the in the uh, conference room every day, you know, all of that works into something that can be an can be a lucrative business. Right. I mean, like in Sandy's case, Sandy took what she had done for years with the furniture store and her passion for design and turned it into a business. But there's another woman who I interviewed who her name is Jamie. She's in Florida. And Jamie had a position all her life that was not something that you would feel 
uh, had any any particular anything special about it in particular more of an admin role support right. always in the back always in the background always supporting but never really out front and never leading and and Jamie is the kind of person who's not particularly confident you know she's just she's the person who's always going to be there and she's a rock and she's super you know supportive but that has been her life now she finds when she's moved to Florida to a condo, she downsized from the family home and her husband passed away. So she, she had the courage to move to Florida by herself and she has kids in Florida, but they're not right near her. And she had this little, again, a little hobby and it was never anything that she thought she had any talent in at all. She just enjoyed making window boxes and planting them up painting them, you know, uh, and, and they were really creative. And she started the same thing that Sandy did that I think is the key. No expectations, one foot at a time. She didn't even expect to start a business at all. She was creating these window boxes, planting them up. And pretty soon people started asking her, Jamie, can you make one of those for me? They're these self-watering boxes. They're really pretty. And she said, oh, sure. You know, I can do that for you. So now here it is, fast forward, it's like five years later, and Jamie in Florida, who was worried also about having, you know, being able to have a lifestyle she could support uh, financially, she had that in the back of her mind too. She is making these flower boxes, she sells them online, she has people working for her, she has wow. all the local nurseries and so forth requesting her window boxes. And she's not going to turn it into anything bigger. She doesn't want to go anything bigger, but she's got it just enough. And she turned her total, her passion into something that she makes money doing, but it's less about a business for her. It's not like she's running a business. She has someone to help her do the books and all of that. She's just simply doing what she was going to do anyway, but doing more of it and actually getting paid for it. So, you know, I think that the key that I see for people who are successfully, you know, walking forward and saying, I don't want to do nothing because that unplugging completely, you know, may give you that sense of isolation that we all know about in retirement, like you're removed from everything. It keeps her plugged in, but um, it's that one foot in front of the other, you know, not going into it with this big business plan. And that you've got to hit this milestone. No, we did that when we were 40. Maybe we did it when we were 50. But now it's about saying, hey, maybe I can sell a few of these. Maybe I can give a few lessons, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, online or whatever it might be to kids who need tutoring in math. You know, whatever it is that you like doing that you can actually, people will actually want to pay you because it's a valuable service. and even if they don't pay you, you know, it seems to me that the people who are happiest in these years, and there's so many years now, you know, 25 yeah. years in retirement, not yes. five, 10, 15 years. Not exactly. And I think one of the things you said there, it, it's not just making things and selling things. There are services you can provide. You know, a lot of people who are listening probably say, well, you know, I'm not creative enough to build something on my own or to sell something, but they've got services, they've got knowledge, they've got skills that they can share, like you mentioned, tutoring in math or teaching someone whatever skill it was that you used through your career, you know, regardless of what that is, you can teach someone how to do that. There's so many things you can do. And I think it just having that sense of purpose makes your life a whole lot uh, richer. Than, than just saying, yep, I'm retired and now I'm just going to sit down and relax. You know, that works for the first month. Yeah, the traditional retirement is um, the smile, oh, right? It's called the smile, like where you, you know, the first <laughs> couple of years in retirement, you're so excited to be free. You're liberated. Now you're going to go travel, 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 spend a bunch of money, you know, whoop, you know wee, this is fun. And then you go through that period of like, okay, I did that. Now what? I'm really, I'm really, really happy that I did it, but uh, I miss, I miss contributing. And that it, I think it's that sense of contribution yep. that we miss. And 
So if you're fortunate enough where you're in a position and you can, uh, even if you're, even if it's just with your time, even just a little bit here and there, um, you know, volunteering is, seems to be the number one fulfillment that I find amongst the people I, I find who have been retired for 10 years or more that makes them really feel plugged in and, you know, part of the community and actively involved. And again, that keeps you social because if you're on the board of a local charity or food bank, whatever it might be, then you're getting included. You're being invited you know, to participate and to to do things with other people in, in the community that, you know, just kind of, it just gives you that get up in the morning. And even if it's what, t- twice a week or once a week, you know, w- whatever it is, it, it's, it's all about staying the, I think that the new retirement, if you will, if you want to call it that new normal retirement is, is all about, is all about that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think it is important that people, figure out how to find a lifestyle where they can live under their means, you know, not at the, not at their budget, but under their budget. And that will give that, that provides that sense of sleep at night, peace of mind, because the last thing you want to do is be waking up in the middle of the night and asking yourself if you've truly stress tested your lifestyle so it can last. Because the last thing I want to do is imagine my 90 year old self, my mom lived to be 94. So I'm imagining that I'm talking to myself and I'm 90 and I'm saying, okay, 90 year old Pam, you know, how are you feeling? Are you okay? How'd you, how did you figure out how to make sure your medical, you know, your health is, is, is covered under different circumstances and kind of stress test it in my mind, because I don't want to be, I don't want to be 90 and worried about, you know, making sure that I'm going to be able to, um, you know, keep, keep my, keep my house or keep my condo or live independently. Yeah. It's hard when you think about it that way. And you think about what am I going to be doing when I'm 90? Will I be be sitting on a park bench wondering where my next meal is going to come from? Or will I be, you know, enjoying myself because I've kind of pace things along and i think i think it's important to uh, as you say live be- live below your means no you know don't spend all your money right now make sure that there's a little bit left at the end yeah and it's not for financial reasons no it's peace all of mind <laughs> find reasons yeah. and you know just evaluating where you are and and just you know if you're if you're, if you're married um and being able to sit down and say let's you know, let's spend less than, than we can afford, than we can afford. We can afford to spend more. Let's not. Um, and I think that the other thing that's of the question that people are asking these days as they get closer to retirement. And by the way, I am certainly getting close to retirement age myself, but for me, I'm going to continue to work God willing well into my seventies because, because I want to, I think I want to, <laughs> Maybe I'll change my mind a little bit later on. But I think that one point that comes up a lot, Jackie, that's interesting is asking not what you're going to retire from and focusing on the past, but because we do have so much time ahead. Most of us have got, you know, hopefully if you, if you're, you know, if you're in good um, health and, you know, you should be able to look forward and say, you know, if you're 64, you know, or, or if you're 70, that you've got another 15 years to really enjoy um, those years. And so instead of thinking about what am I retiring from and putting all the focus on what I did, and what I have done, what I have accomplished in past tense, um, it's kind of nice to think about what are you retiring to? What are you retiring to? What's the next chapter? Because we've been brought up with the sense of the definition of retirement being about, this is what I did in my past life. And I think if you can just kind of understand that the the future is much longer than you might think it could be, that what are you retiring to? What's ahead? That's exactly right. And that's what I say on my website. You know, what do you, you know, don't think about what you're retiring from. It's what are you retiring to? What's coming next? That's the and thing. I, 
And I try to try to suggest that to people because when we meet someone, you always say, you know, hi, I'm Jackie and I'm uh, whatever, or what do you do when you meet a person? And, and people are scared, I think, of that in the retirement sense, because all they can say is, I used to be a lawyer, or I'm a retired plumber, or, you know, whatever. They they hold on to what they used to be instead of saying, you know, hi, I'm Jackie and I'm retired, as if that's, you know, that's a horrible thing to say. And that's I know it's so funny. I mean, I think that I'm guilty of the same thing. If I meet somebody, um, it, you know, if I meet, especially if I meet a man who had like a, a long career and, you know, he's 78 years old and he says, oh, I'm retired now. And I'm guilty of it, of saying, what well, what do? did you do? You know, and you can't help it. But, you know, when you have more life behind what you, are you doing now? than you do in front of you, it's a lot easier to go backward and really focus on when I was working, I did this. When I was younger, I did that. And, and, you know, really reliving, which is great, but we do have, and I think this is the name of the name of the song here. We have so much more life ahead of us than we realize because our, our lifespans are just, you know, getting longer. So it's, it, it is so powerful to think about how do I take all of the life experience and work experience and now do to create a rich retirement for myself. And I don't mean rich in financial terms. I mean, yeah. rich in terms of vibrant. And, you know, have you noticed also that when people get past retirement and it's the great equalizer in terms of lifestyles and incomes, because I know people in my own life who, when I was growing up, for example, when I was a kid, my parents were much older when they had me. So I was around retired people since I was a little kid, always older people. And I noticed something even back then that after they retired, there would be this sense of, okay, this particular couple or this particular person was uh, owned a company and was, you know, I knew was very affluent, you know, wealthy. And then this person here, who's also in this friend circle, was like here. And by the time they were in retirement, most of their income was from Social Security. And yet, as the years, you know, you go forward into retirement, past retirement, it's the great equalizer. It's yeah. almost like, who cares? You know, exactly. we're not doing that anymore. We're putting value on other things. We're getting together. We're laughing. We're having fun. It's a rich life. It's a rich life without any conversation about money. But that's where I come back to living below your means. You know, if you can figure out how to be happy and comfortable and live below your budget, you know, that's it. I, I'm not saying that you deprive yourself and you don't spend the money to go on the trips and, and, you know, do the things you want to do. That's, that's, that, that's crazy. That's going too far, but it's just that sense that I can be, I can be fulfilled and I don't have to feel any more like I have to be, uh, you know, getting ahead or that it's all about money. And I really believe that as we age past retirement, it is, it becomes much more equal. The things yeah. we care about are, are much more the same. I think so. I think you're right. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to do. You've mentioned a couple of times that you think retirement or the definition of retirement is changing or needs to change. And, and that's why, you know, that's why I named the show Beyond Retirement, because I don't think that people just stop at retirement. You don't, you know, you don't withdraw, you just grow and you you move on and you do new things. And this is the life that's in the next, the next stage. It's not a not an end by any means. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's uh, the conversations around like the one we're having right now are really helpful for people to realize that they're not alone because yeah. otherwise, you know, you start to feel like what's wrong with me, I should be happy. You know, I, I finally am no longer working at that company where I was feeling a little bit um, maybe uh, discounted or, you know, I didn't love everything about where I was. I felt like a became sort of a grind. I'm so happy to get rid of it. But then after you go through that honeymoon period, the first couple of years, you sink down into that sense of, you know, um, now what, what am I missing here? You know, there's, there's something that's really missing and it's, there's so much that 
tapping into what you really love doing and really yeah. focusing on, you know, not just how can I turn it into an income at all, but how can I, I turn enjoy it? it. Um, uh, where's my community? You know, where is my community? And I also think that the most successful people in retirement do what my parents did. So when my parents, my parents had a super long retirement, not because they wanted to, but because my dad had to stop working um, at, a, at a little bit of a younger age. So my parents had to figure it out, both financially and everything else. And they moved to Florida and they were smart enough to have friends younger than they are. And I'm finding now, I'm saying to myself, Pam, you need younger friends because all my friends are older, but this is what they did that was so, so right. They had a lot of friends in their community. They were very social and they were younger than they were. And they all watched out for each other. And that friends network, you know, what, even if you have extended family, kids, grandkids, everybody's busy. If you have a friends network where you watch out for each other. So, you know, this, this scenario happens a lot in communities where it's 55 plus or it's a retirement community. So they were in a condo, you know, retirement community where the neighbors, if it was 10 o'clock in the morning and the newspaper on the driveway wasn't taken in by 10, they would go over and knock on the door. And my mom knew, she just knew after my dad passed away, she had this whole support system, not only a family, but she had her friends, her contemporaries, people younger and people her own age who she could really count on. And I think that as we go into retirement, you know, thinking about, you know, I need to collect more friends and I need younger friends. <laughs> Well, Pam, I think we could probably talk about this for a long, long time, but we're going to have to draw it to a close. Um, do you have any final parting uh, words of wisdom that you'd like to share? Or anything about your your own business or wealth ramp that you'd like to share with the uh, with the listeners? Well, given that I'm a living example of taking something that I really wanted to do to solve a problem and turned it into a business, um, and Sandy, who took her design and her lack of credentials and lack of confidence and Jamie who started her flower box business, all those things. I say, when you're relaxed and you're not under pressure, anything can happen. You can do anything. You can turn anything into a little bit of income. You can do the, the volunteer, but you know, just staying plugged in and staying connected in every way you can and knowing you are not alone. You are not alone. This is what we're all facing as we have longer, longer retirement roads that we have to be considering. Fabulous. Thanks very much, Pam. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Me too. Thank you. And that's it for this episode of Beyond Retirement. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you ready to start rocking your retirement? Head on over to www.beyondretirement.ca forward slash rocking it and sign up to plan out your own roadmap for retirement. Don't wait till it's too late.